Warning, this video and all other videos on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risk and you are prepared to lose it all. Why do people love Bitcoin? Why do they love crypto? Well, I got to tell you something. 28% of young folks say they want it, and I'll tell you why. Going back to 2013, the number one asset, the number one performing asset, Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Uh, how much? How about 315,000 percent? 315,000 percent. All uh, right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about Bitcoin, a little bit about, let's call it traditional finance, wider implications. I want to check in on the charts because I see, as always, when we're approaching these cycle lows, a lot of confusion, a lot of narrative builds, etc., etc. So we're going to just keep it real, as always, we're going to point at the charts and use the cycles as a tool to guide us through this so that we don't get shaken out and we don't buy into any of the narrative or fear out there. Kicking things off with Bitcoin. Take a look at this, okay? Because this is the Bitcoin ETF net flows in millions, okay? Blue indicates an increase, orange indicates a decrease, and gray is the total. And at the hard right edge, okay, up and to the right, this is needless to say a huge and well-established uptrend. I see no reason to doubt the trend until it starts to break. As of right now, tells me to keep an open mind about continuing to see flows come into the Bitcoin space via the ETFs. And of course, this comes off of the back of seeing what has been, quite frankly, one of the least volatile three-month periods in all of Bitcoin's history. The same thing actually happens every cycle. And in every halving cycle, you find long periods of time where Bitcoin stays in a relatively narrow price range. And then, of course, as I often say, compression precedes expansion. Said a more simple way, suddenly the price explodes one way or the other. Now, volatility compressions do not give an indication as to direction, but the more that we squeeze, the more that volatility declines, the bigger the implied move is when it is revealed. So given we've just had the most historic compression, is it reasonable to expect the most historic expansion? The question, of course, remains, will that expansion be up or to the downside? If you've been on this channel before, you know what my expectation is. And have a look at this, because ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the most exciting part for the whole cycle. The most gains were always made after the halving, and of course, currently, we are post-halving. If any of the prior cycles are to go by, if we resemble any of the prior cycles whatsoever, the next few months will be life-changing for many. Are you ready? I know I am. You can see on this chart here, the black vertical lines denote the halvings. And you can see, highlighted in yellow here, what happened every other time in history. So does it tell us to keep an open mind about seeing even a small expansion here, which would put us above around 180K? I think so. I think so. I know, like I said earlier, I am certainly ready. And a similar kind of theme here, because the ramp up in Bitcoin is likely about to begin. Once Bitcoin gets above its ceiling and enters price discovery, it will escalate very, very quickly. And so you can see here, okay, we get this bull run start. We get a ramp up into the ceiling, which is the prior all-time high level, and then we enter price discovery and Bitcoin does Bitcoin things. Same thing here, we get a start of a bull run, okay, consolidation around the prior all-time high, termed the ceiling in this chart, and then off we go to expansion. The exact same thing here, bull run starts, a little bit of digestion around the ceiling before we break through and go parabolic. And if we look at the hard right edge, what a wild time to be alive, okay? We have already seen the start of the bull run. We have already had the chop around the ceiling, the prior all-time high level. All that is left now is to enter price discovery and see an enormous upside rally for Bitcoin. It's also of note that we have built a massive wall of worry here. There are more top callers here than there have been in a very, very, very long time. There are a whole heap of bears out there. There are a whole heap of doubters out there. And not only is this chart looking very much set up to see a move into price discovery, we also have likely found a daily and a weekly cycle low to give us the space to run and trust the breakout as and when it occurs. So as I often say, a wild time to be alive. And you can see how wild these times are because people can't really get their head around what's going on at the moment, okay? For example, how do you explain this? The Dow Jones is up 200 points. The S&P down 1.5, the Nasdaq down 2.7, the Russell 2K down minus 1%. And so the recent narrative has been that we're seeing capital rotating out of large cap stocks into small caps. However, the Dow's up 200 points today, which doesn't fit that idea, while big tech is getting crushed, 
Meanwhile, the markets are now pricing in three rate cuts in 24, and the Fed pivot seems to be here. As we've been covering on this channel over and over again, they are 100% priced in at the moment for September at the latest, and I have been speculating that we may even see them earlier than that, assuming the bond market continues to signal that as the yields come off. And all of this, while Nasdaq is on track for its worst daily performance since December 2022, big stocks are worried allegedly. According to this account, at least, we're also seeing a whole heap of narrative about the great rotation. We're seeing people say things like, we need the small caps to move, otherwise crypto doesn't have permission to move higher. But that same idea was applied to gold originally. Remember, that same idea was it gold needs to roll over or the stock market can't move higher. And what we saw was both of those things run at the same time. Again, to add to this kind of confusion and this chaos and the stuff that doesn't really make sense, we've got gold rallying in the face of what has been a strong dollar until the last few sessions. We've got it rallying in what has been an elevated yield environment. Again, it's not really the type of environment you'd expect gold to do well. And we've had gold breaking above its prior all-time high and entering a new bull run against a backdrop of the stock market also putting in a parabolic blow off top. And so the same people that are calling for this whole expansion thing needing to give permission also were using this technique to say the stock market couldn't go into expansion unless gold rolled over only to negate that whole idea in the first place. So my point is not to pick on anyone here. My point is to simply say everyone is confused about what's going on, but that is because they don't have cycles. Okay, how do we explain the Dow Jones moving up whilst this stuff is coming off? Well, it's very simple. We are due a cycle low. Anyone that has been on the channel for any length of time knows that we are expecting a cycle low into the last week of this month. I've also been telling you over and over again that it is unusual to see breadth widen into tops. Okay, it is completely abnormal. We should be expecting breadth to narrow into tops, not widen. This time really is different, not just because gold is running with the stock market, but also because breadth is widening and a whole heap of other reasons, such as hitting an all-time high for Bitcoin before the halving. A lot of people are out here very dazed and confused. A lot of people are disconnected from reality. There's a lot of cognitive dissonance because people can't make head or tails of this. None of this makes sense. But all you really need to do is allow the cycles to guide you, understand where we are in the longer term multi-decade cycles, which by the way, is right at the end. And when we are right at the end of the cycles, we see everything get manipulated to the upside before a historic crash unfolds. That is why everything keeps running together. That is why nothing makes sense. That is why this is not rotation into small caps. And instead, we're going to see breadth widen into the top instead of narrow. Okay, this time really is different because it is the end of a 42 year cycle. And thus, everything is going to get manipulated up to the upside in order to generate liquidity to let the big and important players out. Armed with this knowledge, armed with the cycles, we will be able to be part of those big players that are using this strategy to exit at the top. Meanwhile, everyone else, like I said, is going to be dazed and confused trying to figure out why rotation is not really looking the way it's supposed to look, why gold keeps breaking out, why the yields are coming off early, even though we're not supposed to be cutting rates anytime soon. And I am here to tell you once again that First of all, we're going to expect these cycle lows. We've been expecting these cycle lows, but also you're going to watch this whole rotation crew throw this idea out of the window in the next couple of weeks because we're going to find these cycle lows for the S&P and the NASDAQ, and then they are going to likely move up to fresh all-time highs with the Russell 2K moving up as well. Again, everyone is going to be saying, how can this be? I thought we were seeing rotation. I thought the top was in. All the top callers and doomsayers have been out in full force. And what they don't understand is that this current manipulated move higher likely has a lot more gas left in the goose. So again, I say a wild, wild time to be alive. And all of this is occurring, okay, against a backdrop of consumer sentiment at levels only seen during the great financial crisis of around 2008. US household perception of current economic conditions dropped sharply once again. Okay, take a look at this. This is not nothing. In the last 40 years, it was only so low in 2022 and 2007 to 2009 financial crisis. Note the time as well, in the last 40 years. Why is that? That is because this is the end of the 42 year cycle. And if you want a bit more of an explanation, how is it that gold is rallying? Okay, is gold rallying because inflation is coming off, because yields are elevated, because the stock market is running? No, 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 none of that makes sense. So why then is gold breaking out? And of course, the answer is because gold always knows something. The question is, what is it that gold knows? Gold knows here, okay, that we've got a debt crisis brewing. That is why gold is rallying. Gold is rallying because they are going to use gold to fix the debt issue. Here in the dark blue, we've got the US 10-year real rate upside down, inverted, okay, against gold. Check out the gap between these two. What does it imply? It implies the rates are going to get completely slashed and gold is going to do gold things once more. Again, I'm here to tell you, okay, very few people actually understand the mechanism underneath what is going on at the moment. People think this is some kind of big rip roaring, welcome to the roaring 20s bull market. People think liquidity is going up forever. That is not the case. None of this is real. 
This entire thing is manipulated. Gold is breaking out because it knows a debt crisis is coming. There's a whole heap of people saying we're not going to crash any time before the change of government at the end of the year, or we're not going to crash any time before the liquidity cycle tops at the end of 2025 going into 2026. They're not understanding what the markets are telling us here. The markets are telling us that we've got a big parabolic blow off top that we are almost complete on, by the way, followed by a severe downturn, an economic crisis, a debt problem, and a whole heap of other nasty things to come. Now, I know my tone today has kind of been towards the bearishness, doomsayers, and all of that, but understand Camel is a very, very different type of bear because Camel says all of this whilst remaining long and strong the entire way, okay? I am still long and strong. I am still calling for much, much, much higher prices. So this is by no means one of those accounts that just non-stop posts bearishness, non-stop posts thumbnails with everything on fire. That is not what this is, okay? I am here to tell you that we've got a daily cycle low for the Dixie, and I'm kind of leaning on the side now that we might get this flush. We might get a failed daily cycle here and a rollover. That would catalyze a blow off top in, of course, gold, Bitcoin and the stock market. When we look at Bitcoin, you know, no one really believed that we were going to find a weekly cycle low. The only thing I got wrong was I thought we would hold above this low and needless to say, we undercut it a bit. But already in just a few candles, we are back above. We are looking for some kind of bull flag or a slight pullback here before a resumption of the uptrend. And then it should be third and final angle time. Okay, again, very, very consistent on this channel at saying we are expecting a third angle to come in. And this is the only missing component. I remain cautiously optimistic here that we are setting up for a big, big move into price discovery. So again, even though I am medium term bearish, even though I'm calling for a huge crash, a global recession, I remain long and strong. My posture remains maximum bullishness until we see those third and final angles violate. Same deal with gold. No one would like to see a rollover into a weekly cycle low more than me for gold, but we are long, we are strong, we are breaking above the all time highs. And I see no reason why this thing can't continue to run because again, we are staring down the barrel at a debt crisis issue. Meanwhile, when we look at the yields, okay, again, I say, tell it to the bond market. They know rate cuts are coming sooner than September. And unless we start to see some relief here, then again, I am here to tell you, it seems pretty likely by using the bond market as a proxy that we will indeed be seeing those cuts show up earlier than people are ready for. When we look at the two year yield, okay, it doesn't have much more to go. By the time we get somewhere in this neighborhood where my cursor is, okay, that should be the signal that we might even be seeing a July rate cut. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy indeed. And of course, the stock market, okay? Like I said, a bunch of people are calling tops here. A bunch of people are calling rotation here into small caps. A bunch of people are saying that we're about to start the new financial crisis. But this arrow has been on this chart right here for the last week of July since about the start of June. The Camel Crew know, okay? We've even got this one up here for the next cycle low. This is what we do. Whilst a whole heap of people are gonna be searching for a narrative, I am here to simply say once more, every dip has its narrative. The cycle lows serve to flush and reset the sentiment, and then we can look for truly committing to third and final angles thereafter. I've been saying over and over again, something like this kind of makes sense, and then third and final angle, commit to that one, sell the top and flip short. Meanwhile, we have lost our temporary third angle for the NASDAQ, but to that I simply say, good. We are gonna be looking for a cycle low sometime over the next few sessions confirmed of a trend line break. And then I think you'll see me add another position here. The Dow Jones causing a whole heap of confusion as well. Okay. People don't really understand, but like I've been saying over and over again, third and final angle. Okay. It's been sat here. We've been waiting for it to come. I've been saying that we should be expecting to see it. And it looks like it might be thinking about thinking about having that move to 44 plus K during this third and final angle. Of course, again, I am here to tell you this is a manipulated move. This is a manipulated move to generate liquidity to let the big players out. But if you understand how these longer term cycles work, then you too can exit when the big boys do and look to flip short. The Russell 2K, again, you know, we've been long since the lows. We've been targeting around 3K. And again, I am here to tell you there's going to be a whole heap of narrative out there, a whole heap of BS, okay? But don't believe it. Just know this. Keep it simple. Something like this is expected, 3K, and then the whole thing dies. Again, if you want to use this manipulated move to exit near the top and flip short, then tune in, hit that subscribe button. And I'm your boy, Camel. I hope you're doing well in life. And until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye. Let's rationalize rapid shoplifting. Make skin color a perk. Blocking our streets for climate change. People can't get to work. Endorse.